Are you prepared with a first aid kit on your farm? Come join us. See what we've got in our kit. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Lisa and you're watching Yogi Hollow Farm. And I think as most of you know, it's been a bit of a challenging, a bit of a challenging week in the life here. Um, but we're doing good. I just wanted to let everybody know that. And for those of you who don't know what's going on, Ryan has managed to catch the dreaded you-know-what that we're not allowed to talk about. So um, he is doing better, thankfully. The beginning of the week, not so much, but thankfully he is doing much better today. So thank you, everybody, for your prayers, your healing wishes, and everything. We appreciate it so much. Um, and then I took a tumble, uh, got a little caught off guard by Mr. Sherman and had to get some stitches on Tuesday. So that was fun too. So <laughs> we're hoping the week ends better than it started. Um, but yeah, so some people have asked like, like how did you fall or whatever, but here, let me show you. So here's the boy's pen and I, sorry for the shadow, but I fell into those rocks and the first thing to hit was my elbow on the rock right there. So yeah, I busted it open pretty good. But other than that, I am doing fine and Ryan is better. So again, thank you everybody for your well wishes. And Shermie didn't mean it. He simply was trying to get to food, came up from behind me and knocked me off my feet. So that's what I get for not paying attention. And if you can see Grant, there's Grant with his nose all pushed in, making uh, 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 noises. <laughs> you good boy, Shermie, you gentle giant. You a good boy. Yeah, I know, I know. I know, you a good boy. All right, so what are we talking about today? Well, a couple months ago, I did a challenge and I put out what's in your farm first aid kit challenge. And we talked about that on Round the Hay Bale. And if you haven't seen Round the Hay Bale, you gotta come check it out. Um, it is a podcast with Casey at Ormsby Farms, Monica at Bland's Promised Land Ranch, Casey at Boots and Bounty Homestead, myself, and Alicia at Country Mama Musings, and it airs on Mondays at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, 8 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, 9 a.m. Central Time. So let's go. So let's go check out what we've added to our kit because something this week has paid off. So come on along. I'm just going to show you what I added. If you want to go back and see the original video, I'll put the link down below to make it easier for you. Okay, so bear with me because I'm doing this with my phone today just to make it easier. Um, these are all extra blankets that we had on hand. So we have put these with the first aid kit because we're not worried if something happens to them. So if you saw our first video, we had a lot of stuff in there. Um, and so here are some of the things we've added. We've got some black plastic trash bags if needed. We are also keeping our various worming products in there because we find that if it's all in one place, it's a little easier to get to. We have an extra spray bottle that we use to mix the permectin, excuse me, permectrin with water because it comes concentrated and I'll explain what that is in just a minute. We also keep our fly spray in here because fly spray can, if without it, you can have fly strike. So here 
is the Permectrin 2. And what this is used for is for treating poultry mites. It has a bunch of other uses available for it. However, what we use it for is um, we were concerned that we might have a case of poultry mites. And even though we never saw them, we treated for it. And we did use this to make sure that we eradicated it very quickly. It's also used for swine. So we can use it on our pigs if they get mites as well. And then as you can see, it's also good for sheep, dairy cattle, beef, and horses. So we keep this on hand. And then what I do is dilute it in this bottle and then I mark it so that way only that goes in there. We also have a natural remedy for mites, which is poultry protector. And we did spray the coop with this as well as the birds um, because we didn't want to over chemical them, if that makes sense. So we did have this on hand as well, but however, the issue did not seem to be eradicated by this, but we will keep it on hand for preventative. Again, more fly spray is that large container. We have more of the poultry protector. And also since our last video, we have added these medicine dispensers because it is just easier to be able to have more direct control over trying to get medicine in an animal's mouth or beak. Um, I was talking about on the hay bale about how uh, we were trying to get a chicken who would not drink, get some poultry drench in their gullet and things like this can be very handy. Here's a dosage dropper. We've also added that to our case. And an eye eardropper, which has a very narrow point on the end, which makes it a lot easier to get like in a chicken beak. Again, we ended up putting our disposable fly traps in there as well to keep it all in one place. I'm kind of throwing it all over right now, but that's because I want to just make this quick and show you what we have added. Again, you'll have to go to the other video to see what we had in there originally because I figured why repeat it. You guys could check it out. Uh, here's another um, ivermectin paste. We It is for horses, but we use it for our pigs to worm them. We have the remnants of a first aid kit because the items left in there were not enough for humans. And we already bought a new one, so we kept it in here because it has the alcohol pads and so on. So that'll be beneficial. We had that in there for handling the granulated wormer, which was the safeguard. So we can mix it in with food without having to touch it. Obviously, we showed this in the last video, but obviously you have to have gloves. And we've also added these utility knives because they are brand new. We did use one for something else. Um, however, we are keeping these in here because they'll be handy to cut bandages that you're wrapping around and they're not used yet. So they are cleaner. The, compared to the last video, what we have done is we have put it all in a tote and marked it. We keep it by our doorway. One quick tip I do wanna share with you is any bottles need to fit in the tote standing upright. You do not want to lay bottles over no matter how much you tighten them, they tend to leak and you will ruin what's inside the first aid kit. You will also waste product. And as you can see, the Permectrin was pretty pricey. So I'm gonna close this up. I've got one bottle that's a little too tall, but I know that it's half empty, so we're good. I just have to do some rearranging. Let me show you 
the best part. Here it is, the best part. Can you guess what this is? So Tuesday, when I went to the hospital to get stitches, I got talking to someone there and they asked me if I wanted to keep the suture kit contents because they would all go in the garbage because they're no longer sterile. So we now have all the contents that were not used and we will have these on hand and you can see how crucial these can be to your first aid kit. So we've got a whole bunch of different things in here. I'm not gonna open it because I need to sterilize them and then put them in their own bags so that way they stay clean. But um, for now, you can see for flushing wounds, uh, we've got some tweezers, we've got some scissors that are gonna be really handy. And we've got the ones with the curved angle here. So I am going to sterilize those and put them in our kit. So that was a great way to get a hold of them. So I'm pretty excited about that. So like I said, it's right by the front door. Makes it really easy if we have to grab it in a hurry. And so that's what we've added. So guys, I hope you learned something today, or I hope I encouraged you to get a first aid kit together. Um, it's super important, and we found that having it on hand, especially in a rural area, has been wonderful. Um, we really like that we've expanded the kit. We like that we've added to it as we've learned. And I encourage all of you, whether you have a farm with farm animals, a homestead, or you have pets, or you have um, family members. I wanna see what's in your farm first aid kit. And I want you to join the challenge. So I know that a lot of us talked about this on the past episode of Round the Hay Bale on the podcast, and I will put the link down below. Um, but this is a really important topic and it's something you don't think about until something happens. So we're trying to be proactive and also we want to learn from all of you. So don't tell me I don't have farm animals or I don't have animals or I don't have pets, like whatever you have, film a video. I want to see your first aid kit. Just use our hashtag and I'm going to put it down below because... We all need first aid, so it's an important thing to have on hand, and many of us are unprepared, so join the challenge. No excuses. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks for watching, and thanks again for all your prayers and your well wishes. We are doing just fine, and we will be live tonight at 7.30 MST uh, for our open panel chat, so we hope that you'll join us, and... We're getting so close. So thank you to all our old subscribers. Thanks to our new subscribers. And thanks to our future subscribers. Take care, everybody. Have a great day.